fish production in the country. Now, at the same time, in a bid to further boost production and ensure sustainability, producers are now turning to circular plastic fish cages, which are considered to be more durable than the conventional ones to rare fish. Very own Dennis Otieno was in Sierra County and tells us more about these floating plastic farms on this week's Smart Farm. Smart Farm, brought to you by Equity. Looking for a convenient way of receiving payments for your farming business? Get one Equity Till number for free. No sign-up fee, no commissions charged. Visit any Equity branch or call 763 000 to sign up for free. Grow your farming business with one Equity Till number. Our Smart Farm expedition takes us to county number 41, Siaya. 24 kilometers from the county's largest town, Bondo, sits Bolena Fish Farm. It is here that Roger Sogola and his team are practicing cage fish farming in Lake Victoria. Ogola has installed the circular high-density polyethylene cages to rare tilapia at their farm. The cage we have here is a 20 meter diameter. That means they are 60 meter round. It is a 6 meters deep on the net and we put it between 18 meter, 15 to 18 meters in the waters for proper exchange between uh, fish feed, uh, fecal matter and oxygen exchange within, between the fish and the habit, natural habitat. The circular plastic cages have marked a shift from the traditional square and rectangular wooden cages that struggle to withstand strong currents. Ogola also prefers the plastic cages owing to their durable nature. The wooden cages can be used for approximately two years, thus proving costly for farmers in the long run. The material that is used to make these cages has a lifespan of between 25 to 30 years. Yeah. The reason for choosing this material is because uh, first, it's long lasting, it is safe for the environment, it's also biodegradable. So once uh, you're done with the cages, you can repurpose the material. This kind of cage holds about 30 tons. That is 100,000 fish at 300 grams average weight. But before fish are released into the cages in the lake, eggs are hatched in an incubation room. When the fingerlings are about a month old, they are transferred to a nursery and fed on marsh and pellets for two months until they reach five grams. The first and, th and foremost thing is uh, stocking capacity. You need to know how much fish you have in the cages. That way you need to get to understand how much feed you're going to give to the fish. If you don't know the number, you could be feeding air or you could be feeding less or more. Using these plastic cages commercially to produce fish is however not a walk in the park. Besides the heavy investments required to install them, the venture requires constant monitoring to prevent losses. The predator net should be in order, should be checked regularly. At least every harvest you need to change, to take them out and clean them before you bring them back for a new batch. Then making sure that the cage net is also well done, there are no holes on it, uh, it is also clean and then having a cover net to prevent predation and theft. According to the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute, there are over 6,000 fish cages on the Kenyan portion of Lake Victoria. Though this technique is gaining popularity, issues of safety have emerged of late. As long as you have a bad sight, you always have problems. By bad sight, we mean if the area where you want to put the cages is closer to the shores, if there's no proper water exchange, the dissolved oxygen is not okay, and then you have uh, total dissolved substances also being too much in the water, then you'll have a problem. And then after site selection, there's also temperature to be maintained within the cages, the waters around, because uh, tilapia needs 24 degrees 
to at an optimum level. So if the waters are below 24 degrees, they'll have a problem. The other thing you need to know is crowding. If you have too much fish in a confined space, they will die. Fish need space to swim, need space to move about. So when there's less space, they, this conflict, they hit each other, and with the scales, they prick each other, then it causes infection on the skin, and that eventually causes death. In the recent past, local cage fish farmers have counted huge losses following mysterious fish deaths in Lake Victoria. Latest government figures show Kenya's annual fish consumption has risen to 600,000 tons against a production of 400,000 tons. According to Ogola, sustainable methods of fish production, such as the use of plastic cages, hold the key to addressing the gap in demand and supply. Denis Otieno, Smart Farm. Smart Farm.